Welcome to The Application, the go-to, how-to podcast for higher education marketers. I'm your host, Allison Tercio, Assistant Vice President of Enrollment and Marketing at Siena College. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, this podcast is packed with practical tips and actionable advice to help you elevate your marketing game. In each snackable episode, we bring in experts to share their insights and experience on the topics that matter most to you. Got a question or idea you'd like us to cover? Email team at enrollify.org or reach out to me on Twitter or LinkedIn. The application is part of the Enrollify Podcast Network. And if you like this show, you'll definitely want to check out our other higher ed focused podcasts on admissions, tech, marketing, and more. They're packed with stories, ideas, and tools to help you be the best in your field. All right, it's time for the show. I am so excited to have Kevin Tyler as our guest on this episode to do a little dreaming about what higher ed marketing could look like if we all worked together. Kevin is Director of Community Engagement at Simpson Scarborough, working with CMOs from institutions across the country to help them reach their strategic goals with data, insights, and programming, while moving the higher ed marketing industry forward in important ways. Simpson Scarborough recently launched the CMO Lab, the first community developed specifically for higher ed CMOs. Kevin is also host of Higher Voltage, a podcast about higher ed marketing and branding, and I highly recommend you check it out. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you so much, Allison. It's great to be here. I love this idea of forming a community of practice, a network for higher ed marketing leaders. Why is it important for higher ed CMOs and higher ed marketing leaders to have a support network among their peers? So, I mean, I think there are lots of reasons uh, it's important. One of the most pressing ones that comes to mind is that the culture of competition that exists in higher ed um, can sometimes make uh, CMOs and their teams feel kind of isolated from other institutions. Uh, we're so focused on uh, the messaging for our own institution that we sometimes forget to ask for help or see what other schools are doing. And uh, I think that the this kind of initiative brings together a really unique blend of skill sets because people are coming from all over the place to these CMO roles nowadays in higher ed. They're coming from corporations, they're coming from outside of higher ed. Um, and so there are some really uh, unique benefits to to sharing skill sets, sharing experiences, uh, being able to commiserate when that's uh, when that's needed with people who understand what you're going through, and I think that's one of the biggest things that uh, we, I'm excited about seeing is this kind of collaboration and emotional kind of support that um, this this group might be able to build for itself. And how do you hope that this support network will? be that platform where higher ed CMOs can share experiences and really learn from each other's successes and their failures. So the, uh, the way that the CMO lab is uh, built is um, into the content is kind of divided into three buckets. There's uh, professional development, there's data and insights, and there's co um, community and collaboration, connection and collaboration. Um, each of those pillars uh, has a whole host of, of offers inside of them, but the bottom line is that when we learn from each other, we can move the industry forward together. Gone are the days of, you know, this is the most important in institution. There's the brand name, the exclusive. Uh, there's a whole, there's a bunch of different kinds of schools. And what we are seeing right now in the news is that higher ed has a lot of issues in, uh, in front of it. It's being judged. It's being, the trust is diminishing. We have all these issues and competition is not going to serve any of, it's not going to solve any of those things. And so what are the spaces where we can bring people who are interested in progressing an industry forward, like higher ed and uh, higher ed marketing and branding? Uh, what can we learn from each other and what can we share? And so that we're not fighting each other all the time about, you know, we got the best this or they have the worst that. We're beyond those kinds of conversations. We need to move the entire industry of higher ed forward. And marketers are on the front lines of that evolution because they are the main storytellers that are boots on the ground. Where else would we start but with marketers in that? Let's talk about the industry a little bit because as the industry has been increasing in its challenges, I think the 
role of marketing is evolving and changing. How do you see the role of higher ed CMOs evolving in recent years? How is it changing? I think it's a really great question. It's one I think about a lot. Um, I think first, the role of higher ed is evolving. Colleges are now responsible for so many more things than they were initially intended to be responsible for. We are now thinking about food security and insecurity, mental health, um, you know, all these other things that weren't even in like the, you know, foundational like ideas of what higher ed could look like. So the marketers who are working for these institutions who are now responsible for so many things need to have some level of fluency in all of the new things that higher ed is responsible for. Gun rights, voting rights, the politicization of higher education, like I said, mental health. Uh, how are we talking about um, non-binary students? Like, these are all things that marketers have to have some sort of pulse on so that they can message it appropriately to the audiences that they're trying to, to attract. And if we don't have that level of fluency or any level of fluency, we are not doing our audiences any good or certainly not serving the institution the way that we could be. And along with that, what are some of the new skills and competencies, or perhaps not new, but emerging skills and competencies that are really increasingly important for higher ed CMOs to possess? I think that it is important for, for marketers to understand where their audiences are coming from. That's one. That's the, like the people piece. I think marketers uh, are going to need to understand the role of retention and admissions and how are we messaging retention internally on, camp on, the, on campus? How are we reminding people who are already here that they made the right decision and that they should stay here? I think that uh, marketers, there's a whole tech situation, right? That we, we all have to stay up to date on GA4. There are a lot of questions around that. That's happening right now. And I think that there's just this constant churn of new things that are either injecting themselves into higher ed or challenging higher ed. And we have to know about both of them. So these challenger brands that are trying to do other kinds of or offering different versions of education that higher ed could be, whether it's a Google university or whatever employer courses you're getting uh, that will uh, allow you to bypass the entire college experience. We have to know about those things because we, we need to know about what our, what our competitors are doing and how we respond to those things. The world is an ever evolving place and uh, fortunately and unfortunately marketers, again, being at the front line of evolution have to like have some sort of awareness about the ways that the world is changing. And I think along with that, what comes to mind for me is change management because who is better positioned than the CMO and the marketing team to help their institution cope and understand those changes that are coming because, because of that outward looking aspect of the role. How does the evolving role of higher ed marketing and CMOs intersect with the institutional goals? How do, how do we balance between all of this stuff that's changing, really this upheaval that you're describing, but we still need to um, be working towards those institution, institutional goals, enrollment management, retention, revenue generation. How do we stay focused on those core marketing aspects that have always been there while also taking on these evolving needs of our institutions? That's a really great question. And I, uh, to be honest, I'm not sure I have the answer to that. I think the effort in this time in the trajectory or evolution of higher ed, I think the effort might be enough. We're not, we're not going to do everything right all of the time in higher ed. I think that it's what higher ed marketing specifically is one of, I think, one of the hardest places to maintain focus because there are so many audiences and so many goals and so many strategies. And you've got presidents and alums and prospective students and parents and the community that is, the school is in. I don't know that there is a way to balance all of that. I think that if you're making the effort and you're using tools that allow the effort to be um, uh, as seamless as possible, 
a really robust brand guidelines, a really strong messaging strategy, a really strong brand strategy. These are the things that we need in order to, to try to balance all of these things. And you'll have the faculty member that says, I need a, I need a website that says this, or, or, a, or a alumni person who's like, I need a social media account for this. And if we are true to who we are as marketers and true to what we know we need to do for the institution, Hopefully, there will be a way to balance all of the needs and desires and priorities of all these different audiences. I just don't think that exists right now. It's too hard. Yeah, it is really hard. I think it's probably the challenge of the higher ed marketing industry right now, among others, right? Right. So- <laughs> there, are, there are many. <laughs> there are many. So what are some of the other common challenges that higher ed CMOs often face in their roles? And how t- are you thinking a support network will help them to address those challenges. There are as many challenges in higher ed as there are higher ed institutions. Uh, in, in, the, <laughs> <Also> <laughs> in the marketing space, I think you can, there's anything from, you know, r- being under-resourced to having org structures that might not serve the institution best. It's kind of like a carryover and inherited kind of thing uh, okay. to the politicization of higher ed altogether, like these states in like Florida and Texas, North Dakota, South Dakota, mm-hmm. like those are a whole other uh, kind or brand of challenge. And so part of this is there are problems, I think, that the CMO lab that we're launching can solve. And then there are spaces that the CMO lab will provide to for commiseration, for collaboration, for experimentation. We're building this in such a way that uh, we can try things in a safe space. For instance, if there are six or seven uh, CMOs who are trying to figure out how to talk about, say, mental health or talk about org structures or talk about how are we going to like navigate this politicization that we're seeing in higher ed, in the CMO lab, we can get those folks together to what I'm calling a thought cluster to think about ways we can experiment around solutions, right? And so if you start to see in materials and vid- videos, view books, whatever people are making, this kind of shift. And there might be, you know, a mental health section in a view book that, you know, we ha- I have never seen that before. Changing the narrative of higher ed, that could start in the CMO lab. And that's what I hope happens in terms of moving this as an industry forward means talking about the things that your audiences really care about graduation rates, earnings, all of that stuff, yes, but also the experience. How am I going to be supported? Where are the tutors? Where do I go if I run out of food? What happens over spring, summer, Thanksgiving break when I can't go home and and the school shuts down? These are the other things that, that we have to know about. Those are the kinds of issues, challenges, problems that I hope CMOs will bring to the CMO lab so we can all hash it out together. That's this whole like collaboration thing. Again, competition is not going to serve the industry right now. It is not worth splitting all of the hairs between institutions because we're all under attack right now. And I hate to sound like, like into the worldish when I say under attack, but really there are a lot of like challenges that are coming in at all different directions towards higher ed, um, from government to family to community, whatever else. And so these are the things that I'm hoping that we can start to experiment around and possibly solve through the CMO lab. I want to quickly interrupt this conversation to invite you to join me at Element 451's Engage Summit on June 27th through 28th in Raleigh, North Carolina. When it comes to the student experience, We know that you want to be a trusted guide from recruiting to graduation. The Engage Summit by Element 451 brings the best minds in higher ed together to give you the strategy and tools to create a cohesive student experience from start to finish. Explore the latest technologies, increase your skill set, and gain insights into today's students so you can deliver the most personalized, digital engagement experience every step of the way. This is not your standard ed tech user conference. This is a dynamic, inspiring, and empowering event for all higher ed marketers and admissions professionals. I'll be presenting at this event along with some of your favorite higher ed LinkedIn and Twitter follows. You can learn more about this event and register at engage.element451.com. Oh, and get $50 off your registration when you use the discount code Enrollify50 at checkout. See you there. 
I love it and I agree that it's going to take an all hands effort really to change the view that people have developed about higher ed. I mean, the headlines aren't great, right? No, you mentioned not. a couple of the things and then layer on student debt, Yep. layer on free college for everybody, but yep. maybe it's not really for everybody. <laughs> you know, it's it the, the headlines... <laughs> <laughs> the headlines are not necessarily helping any of us in and in this era where we get really pushed on distinction and differentiation, but maybe it's going to be coming together that sol- that really solves these larger issues, which is interesting to me. Yeah, I mean, I think the the, the differentiation and the distinction are very important. Um, and I think it that is only possible if you lean into who you are, not leaning into who you think you need to be. Um, and I think once we break out of this this whole, this idea that we have to be who we think we need to be, the differentiation and the distinction will come soon after. Yeah. And I'm always a proponent for sharing. I wouldn't be hosting this podcast if I wasn't. You know, a lot of people ask me, why do I go and present at conferences? Or why do I tweet about things that are going on, you know, at my institution, wins we've had or strategies that are working. But I I really see the value in everybody (laughs) coming together and sharing that. No, and no two people are going to execute it the same way. It's not going to be cookie cutter. Correct. That's not how someone, someone's not going to take what I've learned and apply it the exact same way so that it looks and sounds exactly like I've done. Um, So I think that there's more power in all of us sharing, um, yeah. not just the good, but also the mistakes, right? Because we can all learn from each other's mistakes. <laughs> totally. And I think that's a really great point. I think that like all of the programming content resources that we're building for this, the idea is not that it's always useful for all the people all of the time. Yeah. That is not the goal. Um, people are in way different kinds of um, structures, way different kinds of institutions. We just want to make sure that people know that we are thinking about what they need and it will be here when it, when you need it, hopefully. If it's not here, we can build it and we can build it with you. The other part about this is that a CMO at a large land grant research institution is going to have a much different experience than a CMO who is at a very small HBCU in the, in the Mm -hmm. South, let's say. And even though that those, uh, those experiences are going to be so markedly different. There will likely be some overlap. There will likely be some sort of similarity that will spark some sort of idea. When uh, when someone like Jenny Petty says, this was my experience, uh, Jenny Petty from University of Montana and Alonda Thomas from Jackson State is like, oh man, I could use that, but in a much different way on my campus. So it's not just like lifting one example and placing it onto another campus, because that can never work that way, because the, everything is different. But exactly. if, it inspi- if it inspires an idea and and serves the community and the campus in a way that um, was never thought of before, we want that kind of in- innovation and that kind of thinking coming out of the CMO app. Yeah, I like this two-way street idea. It can serve the institution but also the institutions can serve the industry better. Correct. In a collective way, which is right. which is a really neat idea. And it's not, yes, it's definitely two way. I think that most, so often we think that the large land grant research institutions have everything figured out. They've got all the tools, they got all the everything, but they have their own set of problems. And it's, and people can learn from anywhere, from anyone. Yep. Small liberal arts colleges have a lot to offer large public institutions around maybe being nimble or thinking about uh, classes and how they're offered. There is People can learn all over the place, and that's what we're hoping happens in this community. I really appreciate the recognition that you're talking about in terms of this isn't easy. <laughs> this, is a, this is a stressful and difficult um, job to be in at a, at a college or university. Sometimes it can feel like a zero sum game. It can, it really can feel like, like CMOs feel that pressure. So how, how are you picturing being part of the support network sort of contributing to the well being and the work-life balance and the, and the stress level, not contrib- not adding stress, but 
lowering the stress level of the people working in these really high stress positions? So the program that we're the programming that we are developing for the CMO lab isn't necessarily um, designed to reduce stress or um, inspire like work life balance. I think that uh, I think that higher ed marketing is uh, it's hard to find balance and yeah. <laughs> work life balance yeah, in higher yeah. ed marketing. I think that that's just kind of a given. However, what we hope to do with with all of the content in this community that we're building is to not make it so hard to find the things that you need to find. If you have a, 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 a peer in a school across the country that you're like, man, I know you've dealt with this because whatever X, Y, Z, how did you do it? That in and of itself might lower, that might lower some stress because you have someone to yeah. a touch point to, to, or a reference point. Um, but sometimes it is in marketing, everything is so rushed. We are reacting to whatever the scenario is. Oh my gosh, we don't have enough, people in this class. Oh my gosh, we have X, Y, Z happening. And if you don't know where to look for information, that becomes very stressful because you want to make the best decision you can make uh, for whatever is going on. And when the information is not available, uh, stress rises and then maybe bad decisions are, are made. Um, so if you already know where you can go, or if you have a group of people, a cohort of individuals who know what you're going through and want to help, uh, I, I'm hopeful that, that that contributes to at least a smoothing out of the experience of being a marketer on a higher ed campus, uh, although I cannot promise it will reduce stress. <laughs> That's a hard ask for sure. Right. Very high ask. But what you're talking about, to me, it sounds like is fostering a sense of camaraderie and belonging and creating a professional community. And all of those things, I believe, should lead to a feeling of emotional support among right. the people who are involved which is mm -hmm. really really important yeah and i think that i think that it's very easy to be on a campus doing marketing as a, a marketing leader and feel very alone in that space um, even though you're touching so many parts of the institution um, it can be very um, isolating and if you don't have those connection points outside of your institution then you're not getting the full benefit of the industry and the peer network that exists in the higher ed marketing space. What are some ways that you're hoping CMO Lab will move the higher ed marketing industry forward? We've talked about a couple of things, but what's on your mind? I think most immediately, I'm hopeful that we can start to see a shift in the way that we talk about higher ed. Um, I got I got really excited on my podcast, Higher Voltage. I interviewed Hank Green, who is one of the founders of an of a initiative called Study Hall that is kind of demystifying higher ed and putting it on YouTube, right? It's a series of videos. You can learn about how to go to college. It's, it's called How to College, How to Pick a Major, all of these things. What I hope that higher ed can do is let go of the shackles <laughs> that it like of its history of like how we talk about things, the words, the, the specific words, the language we are using um, to meet audiences where they are, as opposed to making audiences meet institutions where they are. I have like lots of people talk about this idea of moving from institution centered to student centered. And I really hope that that is what the future of higher ed looks like. Um, and I think that some of that movement can come from the CMO lab. So for instance, we talked about the mental health um, piece. Um, I would love to see what uh, a group of five or six institutions who are in red states. I want to. I would love to see what kind of solutions they can come up with around how they're going to navigate around conversations around diversity and inclusion, if that is something that they want to do. Um, I would be very intrigued on how um, HBCUs are going to continue the momentum that they have. Uh, experienced in their application and, and how and what what good that will come uh, for their institutions. I'd love to hear about that. I'd love to hear about partnerships, uh, more partnerships between institutions, be, between institutions and employers that are just a bit more innovative than the ones that we are seeing now. I would love to see, um, you know, there are so many examples of great programs across the country that are just kind of like hot spots or bright spots of innovation or innovative thought 
uh, that is student centered. And I would love for that to be more a more of a movement, right? Like we need to be these kinds of institutions for the students that we're attracting. And here are the reasons why. There's a really great program out of uh, NYU that the admissions leader, it's not an admissions, uh, I think it's like pipeline development, I believe it's called. Um, but they spend a lot of intentional time in the communities that they are recruiting in. And as a result, they are learning about where their students or their prospective students are coming from and sometimes are able to provide better support or understand where people are coming from so that they can, um, you know, prepare them better for the, the NYU experience. And I think those are the kinds of things when I talk about moving the industry forward, it means being more student centered uh, and more intentional about the decisions we're making around all of the communication here. And we need a network like this in order to do that, because it's really easy to get bogged down in the day-to-day tasks and not be thinking broadly that way about what how our work affects the industry, how our work can move the industry forward. I had a great conversation on an earlier episode this season with Day from Ology about I love all, that. yeah, <laughs> all about the underrated role that marketing plays in equity and access. And you were mentioning some of the things. It's in it's in our verbiage. It can be that simple yeah. in, in how someone can first get introduced to higher education and think it is for me or it's not for me. And we have power there. We, we have the power to change things. Um, at Siena, we just got done creating a student-centered marketing plan where our marketing plan's goals are actually tied to the student's goals. So the student's goals we have found through our research are they need to be able to envision their future, create a vision for themselves. They need to find belonging wherever they decide to go, and they need to feel confident that they made the right decision. They do not want to make the wrong decision. So we have built our all of our marketing strategies and tactics off of how do we make that happen for the students. So we have power to make our institutions student-centered, whether it's within our realm of marketing um, or broader. But I have a feeling if we start within our realm of marketing, it will trickle to the rest. Right. Right. I mean, we see these we see these examples of like marketing bravery from outside of higher ed brands that might not stick in the minds of some people, but do, certainly does in others. And I think that same level of bravery can exist in higher ed. I remember uh, right around the pandemic, uh, Southeast Missouri State University did this whole thing around. We understand that this this like the copy was so poignant in that. We know that you, it's hard to make any sort of decision right now. We know that. And we are here mm-hmm. to help you make this decision for what, for an education, whatever it was. And understanding the time, the context, and not ignoring it, um, being making the decision to be real and be vulnerable as a brand. Yeah. Um, empathetic. Kind of empathetic. Yeah. Right. You yeah. see people. People need to be seen, especially when it comes to the relationship between an institution and an individual. Being seen is really, really important. And so I think that those are all the kinds of things that um, – we should be thinking about as an industry in order to evolve it in ways that are meaningful because we all know that the people coming into higher ed are looking different and higher ed has yet to change to respond to the differences that are coming into its classes. Um, And there will be a disconnect. There'll be some dissonance (laughs) for a while because there'll be an unfamiliarity with each other. And that doesn't have to be the case. So what's next for CMO Lab and how can a CMO get involved? Yes. Okay. So we recently <laughs> had our launch event in Atlanta. It was great. Uh, I was uh, the Marcus Collins keynote speaker, fascinating. Uh, we had 45, about 45 CMOs in attendance to celebrate the launch and hear out some speakers and uh, connect and collaborate with each other. Moving forward, we'll have a regular cadence of programming, monthly webinars, uh, sessions that we're calling office hours that highlights or features a subject matter expert either inside of Simpson Scarborough or from the CMO community itself to share uh, some relevant information, whatever that on a relevant topic. Um, and we'll have regional events uh, every quarter. So that's the, it's kind of like t- taking Simpson Scarborough out on the road. And so we want to make sure that we are placing ourselves in hubs of higher education so that other folks can be, um, uh, have access to some of the information that we have, the research and insights and data. Just launched a website, um, a CMO lab website specifically for members. 
If there are CMOs who would like to join the CMO lab, you can send me an email at K-T-Y-L-E-R, K-Tyler, at simpsonscarborough.com. It's a long, it's long, but <laughs> but that's where you can find me. And I can show you all of the details about the offer, um, the cost, uh, and the benefits uh, to the institution, and also to the CMO and the seat. I think that it's really important um, this this combination of professional development with data and insights and connection and collaboration um, is that the program benefits anyone in the seat of CMO, but ultimately benefits the institution. So this is not just like a professional development course that anyone like you just go to and then you come back and say, I'm better, I'm a better worker, and this is what you'll get from me. Um, this is actually for the good of the institution and to help institutions reach their strategic goals. There you have it, folks. So check out Simpson Scarborough's website, email Kevin or follow him on Twitter or LinkedIn. He has great insights, not just on this podcast. <laughs> he doesn't just <laughs> reserve them for me. So he's he's very great at sharing his insights. So make sure you follow him. And, and thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thanks for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity and in the space to talk about this. I'm very excited about the CMO Lab, and I hope that uh, we see you and some of your uh, colleagues uh, joining. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. If you found this information valuable, please subscribe to the podcast and share this episode with a friend or colleague who might also find it useful. Hey, all Zach here from Enrollify. If you like this podcast, chances are you'll like other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing by the month and we've got a plethora of marketing, admissions, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks that are all designed to empower you to become a better higher ed professional. Our shows feature a selection of the industry's best as your hosts. Learn from Mickey Baines, Jeremy Tears, Jamie Hunt, Jamie Gleason, and many, many more. You can learn more about the Enrollify Podcast Network at podcast.enrollify.org. Our shows help higher ed marketers and admissions professionals find their next big idea. Find yours at podcast.enrollify.org.